All right, guys, uh, here we go with uh, today's lesson. Uh, moving into working with integers, today's lesson is going to be comparing and ordering integers. Uh, kind of two parts to this here is uh, the first thing they're going to be asking us to do here is to compare uh, these different numbers, and, and all we're really doing there is saying, um, you know, which number is bigger and which number is, is smaller, all right, if we're comparing a couple of things. Uh, and then when it comes to ordering them is, if we have a group of numbers, can we put them in order from least to greatest, or even possibly uh, putting them in order from greatest to least? But we're trying to list them uh, in numerical order. So that's kind of the two parts for today. Uh, really, the big thing today, though, is going to be learning what integers are. So kind of the one of the big themes of our seventh grade year here uh, is talking about integers. And what integers are, are, are really when we start to throw not only our positive numbers uh, in there, but we're also starting to include the negative, too. So... Okay, here's the definition of what an integer is. It's the set of all positive and negative whole numbers. The set of all positive and negative whole numbers. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to draw a number line for you here. And you guys have seen number lines before. And what I want to do is start with the number 0. Okay, so zero's in the center here. Now we should all know that uh, 0 is a number that isn't positive or negative. All right. Um, well, we know what positive numbers are. Positive numbers, if I start at 0 and start moving to the right here, well, we'll just count some slashes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That should be good for now. And I'll just go ahead and label these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Those are our positive numbers. And we should know that as we move to the right, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, those numbers are getting bigger. So anytime you're moving to the right on a number line, our numbers are getting bigger. Um, and that means the opposite, too. If you move to the left, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, our numbers are getting smaller. So we already have our uh, positive numbers, all right? And those are positive whole numbers. But now when we get into the opposite of those things, this is when we start uh, bringing in our negative numbers. So the opposite of all these whole numbers are our negatives. So if I start to put in here negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and I'll stop at negative 5 here. Um, when we start including not only the positive numbers, but also the negative numbers, uh, these are what we call our integers. Okay, so here's a number line. It's a good example. Uh, I do want you to notice the arrows on the end here, which says that even though our number line, we're not going to keep drawing them, that that arrow says, even though I stopped at 5, I can keep going, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Same thing on the negative side. All right, even though I stopped at negative five, if I keep moving in that direction there, if I keep moving to the left, I'm going to get negative six, negative seven, negative eight, and it's going to keep on going. Uh, a couple of uh, quick pointers here is one thing I want to point out is uh, kind of the rule of thumb here is as you move on the number line going to the right, anytime that you're moving in that direction, our numbers are going to get bigger. They're going to increase in value. Okay, and I know that's easy with the positive numbers because when we're talking about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, well, we've been working with those our whole life. It's very easy to know that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, those numbers are getting bigger. All right, one important thing to realize here, though, is that when we're dealing with these negative numbers here, you got to keep that in mind, too, because uh, the further the number is to the right on the number line, the bigger it's going to be. So if I were to look at this negative 5 right here, and compare that to negative 1, the negative 1 is actually going to be, again, the bigger number because it is farther to the right on the number line. Okay, so I guess one of the rules of thumb here is that, that I would say when it comes to the negatives, and I'm going to get rid of some of this ink here, when it comes to the negatives, if I'm going to compare numbers like this, all right, and I know this might be a little confusing, but this is probably the best way I can put it. I'm going to look at two numbers like this, the negative 5 and the negative 1. Now, I'm used to saying that 5 is bigger than 1. Okay, I think we all know that when they're positives, 5 is bigger than 1. But when it comes to the negative, negative actually means the opposite of. So when we're dealing with negatives, I try to think of what normally would be the bigger number, 5, but then because it has a negative on there, it actually makes it the smaller number. So the larger the number is as a negative actually means that it's going to be the smaller one. Okay, and we're going to try to remember that as we go on with our lesson here. Okay, uh, this also means that all positive numbers are always going to be bigger than negative numbers because they're further to the right on the number line. Okay, example one. 
Uh, they're going to ask us to order the integers, negative 8, 5, negative 4, 2, 0, and 6 from least to greatest. Okay, so we have this set of numbers right here. And we're going to take all of those numbers and we're just going to simply put them in a list. And we want it to be um, least to greatest. So I'm going to start by writing least down over here. Oh, that's really bad. We're going to try that again. Least. And then eventually over here, we're going to have the greatest. Okay? Um, now, when I do this, the one thing I want to look at here is I always start my smallest number. Since I know positive numbers are always bigger than negatives, what I'm going to do is start with the negative number. So I can identify two negative numbers right there, the negative 8 and the negative 4. And as I look at this, uh, again, like I just said, the bigger the number gets, meaning 8 is usually bigger than 4. But because these are negative, it's actually the opposite of that idea. So the negative 8 actually ends up being the smaller of them, okay? Which then the negative 4 comes next, okay? And you kind of got to imagine this just like uh, on a number line, just like the one that we had before there, okay? Uh, I also have the 0 here. We know 0 is always in between our negatives and our positives, so I can put that in there. And then that leaves me with... Uh, just three numbers, the 2, the 5, and the 6. And again, I want to go least to greatest. Now, we've been doing positives for a long time, so I can just quickly put those in there. 2, 5, and then finally 6 for my final answer. Uh, and again, one thing to keep in mind is your final answer should kind of look like a number line here. Okay, where the first thing you would get would be the negative 8 here. Then we'd get negative 7, negative 6, negative 5. This would be negative 4 negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and eventually we'd get 5, and then 6 would be here, yeah, too. So, all right, just like it would be on a number line. So it's nice to picture that sometimes, the number line, uh, to help you get them in order there. You don't, you don't have to draw, draw the number line, uh, but it's nice to visualize that. Okay, here's one for you guys. Go ahead and pause the video. Try it on your own. Okay, good. Uh, so example two here, compare your answer to mine. Uh, same type of problem. Order the numbers negative 12, 2, 6, negative 18, 12, and negative 1 from least to greatest. Uh, just like I said on the last problem, the first thing that always stand out to me is I look for our negatives because negatives are always going to be the smallest numbers. Okay, then I look for, again, this is kind of awful to say, I look for the biggest number of the negatives, and I see the 18 here is normally biggest, but because it's a negative, really means it's the smallest one. I'm going to write down negative 18, so that one's gone. I'm going to cross it off so I don't forget any. Then I'm going to get the negative 12, and then the negative 1. And then that should be it for all my negatives, and we should be able to get the positives right. So then finally I get my 2, cross that off, I've got my 6, and then lastly we get our 12, there's our final answer, ordering them from least to greatest. Sometimes it's nice to X them off like I did there. That, that way you know you didn't forget any. I can't say how many times that, uh, you know, I've seen people mess this up just because they accidentally forget to put a number in there. Okay. Uh, next thing about a lesson here. So we just talked about being able to order these from least to greatest. Um, another concept that we have to talk about today that might be kind of new is what an absolute value is. Absolute value is the distance a number is from zero on a number line. Okay, And there's a specific symbol for that. It's really just these two lines that go straight up and down like this. And, a lot of, and what's going to happen is uh, there's going to be a number in there. might be a variable, um, but we know a, a variable just represents a number. But that's what these two things are here. Okay, These lines mean absolute value. Okay, And really what this is is a question, because if you ever see this thing here as a question, we never want to leave our answer with these two absolute value symbols there. We always want to get rid of it. It's asking the question, what is the absolute value of negative 3? And I guess the way that I would put it is this. The distance a number is from 0 on a number line. Well, if you really think about it, think about measuring something. There is no such thing as a negative distance. You cannot have a negative distance. All right. Think about measuring my height. All right. I'm 5 foot 9. 
Well, you've never heard anybody be called that they were negative five feet, negative nine inches tall. It's just you can't have that. You can't have a negative distance. You can't measure uh, the length of a table and get a negative number. It's always going to be positive. That's what absolute value is talking about. The answer is always positive. Because if I put my numbers on here, 0, 1, 2, 3, and let's put the opposites on here, which are negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, Okay, absolute value is saying, okay, what's the absolute value of negative 3? Well, here's negative 3, right here. What it's asking is, how far is it from 0? Well, if you count over how many places it is, well, that's one place right there. Okay, move over. That's a, so that's 1, 2, 3 places over. It's 3 places away, so the absolute value of negative 3 is going to be 3. Okay, that's kind of the, the instruction. It's the distance a number is, and since there is, you can't have a negative distance, it's always going to be positive. So the easiest way I put it is when you see this, this negative symbol, I'm going to go back up to right here. When you see this negative symbol in here, all right, that cannot come through those big straight lines. I call them brick walls. The negative cannot go through the brick walls. That negative 3, when it's the absolute value, is going to become positive 3. Absolute value, you always make it positive. Okay, here's three for you to try. State the absolute value of each number. Uh, go ahead and pause it. Okay, uh, guys, real simple here. Absolute value, I can't say this enough. Absolute value just means to make them positive. So what's the absolute value of five? Guess what, it's five. What's the absolute value for B, negative seven? Guess what, you make it positive, it's seven. Uh, what's the absolute value of zero? Well, zero is a number that isn't negative or positive. It's just going to stay zero there. Okay. So really, when you're doing this, you're just simply whatever the number is, you make it positive. Okay. Now I do want to put one thing out here. Point one thing out because there are two different ways to ask this question. Uh, just like I did in example three here, where I'm just asking you state the absolute value. What you're not going to do, and this is what people get confused when it says state the absolute value. Let's go with with letter A here, which is 5. State, state the absolute value of 5. Do not do this. Okay? This is not an answer. State the absolute value of 5. If you were to write this on a test, that's the absolute value of 5. Uh, what I'm going to do there is I'm going to mark that wrong. Okay? That symbol, when you see that, um, you're not, that's not an answer. What you're going to do is this is a question, as I said before. So when you see this, it's asking you the same thing that I did up here. When you see this symbol, it's saying, what is the absolute value of 5? And you would say 5. Same thing here. If you see this, that's a question. What is the absolute value of negative 7? It's 7. Okay, here, what's the absolute value of 0? Zero? 0. So two ways to ask this question. Um, the first way uh, is like I did up here. And the second way is if I give you these symbols. Okay, you're going to get the same answer either way. Just two different ways to state the question. Okay, so that's absolute value. Uh, next, the opposite. All right, the opposite of each number. Um, well, again, we're talking about positives and, ne positives and negatives here. So opposites are going to be equal distance from the, from the zero on a number line. So if we're talking about this is a positive six here, all right, what's its opposite? opposite is going to be negative 6. You're just simply changing the symbol. Okay? What's the absolute, or I'm sorry, what's the opposite uh, of negative 15? Well, if that's negative 15, its opposite is going to be positive 15. What's the opposite of 0? Well, 0 really doesn't have an opposite. It's just still going to stay 0. Uh, one of the big keys, though, is you have to remember the difference between making something that's opposite and making something that's absolute value. Okay? The, because if I, again, go with this number here, 6, all right, just like we did in, in this one here, if I say, what's the absolute value of 6, okay, well, that's going to become because it's always positive. That's different than if I say, uh, here's a 6, and I want to know what's the opposite of 6. Well, the opposite is always going to change the symbol. So because this is a positive 6 right now, its opposite is going to be a negative 6. So really got to keep... Uh, those two things separate. The difference between absolute value and, the, and, and what an opposite is. All right, last question for you guys here. You got an A and a B. 
Uh, if you want to try it on your own, go right ahead, pause the video. Okay, and we're back. Now, I just, this is where you just got to be really careful. It's just like the other day. We'll do part A here first, where we're doing negative Y. But you got to be really careful. Um, and actually, you know what? This is not supposed to be an X. We're going to make that a Y right there. Okay, that's supposed to be Y equals negative 5. Um, so what I'm going to do is take this Y equals negative 5, and I'm going to put it in here. Now you got to remember that negative 5 is going to go in for just the Y. So that negative is still hanging out front there, and then inside the parentheses here I put negative 5. Okay, uh, and one thing I want to say, because I haven't said this yet, is uh, when we're talking about a negative, all right, negative, the negative symbol actually means the opposite of, means the opposite of. So when you're looking at a problem like this, when it says a negative negative 5, what we can say is this is um, the opposite of, okay? The opposite of negative 5. What's the opposite of negative 5? It's positive 5. All right. Uh, kind of a quick shortcut here is two negatives are going to make a positive. All right, but that's why. Uh, next one here. All right. Give me a little separation here. If I rewrite this, 17 minus the absolute value of y. But I'm going to go ahead and plug plug my number uh, negative five in for y here. Uh, now you got to remember that an absolute value is a grouping symbol, just like a parentheses. Okay. And a grouping symbol is, uh, you know, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, where parentheses goes first. So the first thing I have to do is deal with this absolute value. What's the absolute value of negative 5? It's 5. Rewrite everything else. 17 minus 5 gives me 12, and we're done. Uh, that's our lesson today, folks. If you have questions, uh, ask away.